If you're anything like me, you'll be wondering this week, how on earth did we get to the end of January already? Christmas seems like only a few days ago for me at least, uh, and if one thing is for certain, time flies. The end of the Christmas epiphany season is marked in the church's calendar by the Feast of the Presentation of Christ, but this is more commonly known as Candlemas. The episode is recorded in the Gospel of Luke, and as the Holy Family visit Jerusalem, they encounter these two characters, Simeon and Anna, both of whom have lived in something of a state of suspension. Their lives, then, are suddenly transformed on seeing the infant Jesus, and both of them, in their own way, recognise the significance of what it means to encounter Mary and her child. As I say, the alternative name for this celebration is Candlemas, and it's thought that this name relates to the tradition where people would bring the candles they intended to use for the rest of the year and have them blessed. There's something very poignant about this tradition that no longer holds quite the same meaning today. When candles were one of the few sources of light after dark, lighting a candle was a common everyday experience. But by bringing their candles to be blessed, a very ordinary, necessary, everyday activity could take on a deeper meaning. For each candle became a household reminder of Christ, the light of the world, shining in the darkness. Thus, every day, a family, a household, an individual or any kind of gathering could be reminded of the presence of God shining in their lives. I'm not quite sure it would work today if we tried to celebrate something like light bulbmas. I'm sure somebody's tried it somewhere, but it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, does it? But I think there is value in looking for an opportunity to find those small daily reminders of the presence of God with us at home, at school, at work or wherever. One of the things that I try to do with my kids in particular is to spend a couple of minutes at the end of the day doing that old-fashioned thing of counting your blessings. Where in the course of my day might I have caught a glimpse of the light of Christ shining in the world? Where are the opportunities that I've missed to be the light of Christ shining in the world? Where, you know, where might I do that in the future? Just looking for those small everyday possibilities of encountering something of the Lord. The tip I was given recently was to change the way I phrase things. So instead of saying, I have to do X, I was told to try and say, I get to do X, Y, Z. And for me, this has really helped. I'll give you one example, the daily carnage in our house of getting everyone out of the door on time because I have to drop the children off at school has become, I get to drop the children off at school. And my heart fills with gratitude because I know there are people in this world that for a variety of reasons would give almost anything to be able to have the opportunity to do that. I think all of us need to try and find some small, simple way of remembering that just because time has rolled on and the Christmas season is past, the light of Christ goes on shining in the darkness. And we just have to be alert we just have to be ready to look for those small opportunities that present to us all the time in the course of our everyday lives to see something of the light of Christ.